Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for being with us on this uh, cause on the call, cost and reward of discipleship, cost 104. It's been an awesome time today. We're in lesson 20, the rewards of discipleship, part C, which has to deal with the present time. It's a long lesson, and if we're able to complete it, praise the Lord. If we're not able to complete it, we can complete it another time. But you know, the next lesson will basically round up this course. If you've been with us on each, it is so foundational. The tragedy today, there are so many ministers of the gospel operating in signs and wonders and miracles, but they are not disciples of Yeshua. And that's a very terrible perversion because the normal order is to be a disciple first before being a minister. But when you skip the discipleship step and move from believer to minister, you, you may begin to promote yourself, sell yourself, sell your own personal empire. But when you're a disciple, you lift up Yeshua, you exalt him, and everything you do is in his name and for his glory. And brothers and sisters, lesson 19 dealt with the rewards in eternity. Huge rewards, so huge that even if you miss nothing, if you did, I mean, you didn't get anything on this earth and became a partaker of that eternal rewards, it's worth it. That's why the apostles were so wrapped up in that, that apart from John, who lived to 85, others died in the prime of youth. They gladly suffered martyrdom because they saw the glory of the world to come. However, brothers and sisters, one thing the Lord wants us to avoid is to add to Scripture or subtract from Scripture. So it is in Scripture that there are rewards the Lord has promised to those who will serve Him. And today we look at some of them as we break down what He answered Peter when Peter asked him that question in the book of Matthew 19, 27. Then, said Peter, then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we are forsaking all, just as you demanded. We are forsaking all and forward thee shall be a reward therefore. In verse 28, he told them about their reward. Those 12, their awesome reward to judge the tribes of Israel in the world to come. In verse 29, he said, and everyone, this applies to every generation of disciples, everyone that are forsaking houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold reward and shall inherit everlasting life. Let's pray. Father, have your way and break down this awesome promise for us and grant us the grace to receive and understand what you mean. Lord, we pray that this word will bear much fruit, hundredfold in the lives of those who hear, and their name may be honored and glorified in Yeshua's name. Amen. So here, the Lord is saying something very profound. Those who are forsaking what earthlings hold dear for his name's sake. And his name's sake is made for himself. They forsaken it not just for forsaking, but for the sake of the king and his kingdom as priority of their life, they will receive a reward that is hundredfold what they seem to have lost, broken down to bare realities. What is he saying? Now, what humankind labors for can be summed up in these houses, lands, brethren, sisters, brothers, sisters, father, mother, wife, he said, hey, if those things you place them second to me, you're going to gain much more. And this is something only few people can receive. But the Bible says in Hebrews 11, 6, without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to Elohim must believe that he is, is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. One of the errors of the holiness movement was that making it as if it appears that those who receive anything from the Lord and they were inherently sinning. If you got money, you were a sinner, you were not serious enough. No. 
The Bible says the Lord is a rewarder. And Yeshua said the reward is in time and in eternity. So in this present time, let's try to break down. There are about 16 rewards. Number one is a life free of lordship of Satan, who rules the world through three core principles. The self-nature that makes people make decisions they want based on the carnal senses. Romans 8, 5 to 8 deals with that. Then he uses those final five carnal senses to you know, trap them through lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. First John chapter 2, 15 to 17. And the men and brethren, this leads those who are not disciples to continue to live in the sentence of works that was pronounced upon Adam when he fell in Genesis 3, 17 to 19, sweating to eat, just living to sweat, living to ache out a living. The bondy candles of their life are two ends. Their life is about food and bread. And so they go out pushing, shoving, killing, doing anything to get it. But men and brethren, those who are disciples can say like Yeshua, the prince of this world, come and find it nothing in me. Why? For the kingdom of heaven is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Ah, for he that in these things serveth Yeshua is acceptable to Elohim and approved of men. So this is the first reward that a life free of the lordship of Satan who rules the world through those principles of lost him. Number two, let's go on. A life of entering to the rest of our king. This is well free from the pressures to get and acquire. You know what? It's blessed it to the extent that it doesn't hold anything dear. So if you take this thing, it's nothing to them. You take that thing, it's nothing to them because they don't hold anything there. We we'll call it the blessed life of owning nothing. You may have them, but you don't own them. They don't oppress you. And you, you know that life, Yeshua said in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, Come unto me, all the labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. For I'm meek and lowly at heart, you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my body is light. So that is why the Lord invites us to Hebrews chapter 4 to enter the life of his rest. It is available for us, no tension, no pressure. We live our life because it's not us living it, it's Holy Spirit living, using us to live it out. Number three, the Lord has promised to provide the needs of all those who seek first his kingdom. If you read Matthew 6 from verse 19, where it says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where mortar rust doth corrupt, where cheese break through and steal. He ended in verse 33, but seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. All these things people are struggling for shall be added to you. And that promise is true for those who have, you know, who have truly trusted the Lord. They've seen themselves being blessed, not because of their sweat or struggle, because of his favor. Favor is not fair. Favor gives you access to where people cannot have access. They see themselves blessed with things that they couldn't have attained to by their intellect, by their education, by their strength, but the Lord gives it to them so that nobody can glory in man. It comes from the Lord, and that's how he wants to bless his people. We call it the added blessing, the commanded blessings, that as we seek him, he brings birth. He says, don't worry about tomorrow. I'll take care. And in John 6, 27, John said by the Spirit, Labor not for the meat which perisheth. That's what Yeshua told us. Don't labor for what perishes, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you for him, and Elohim the Father sealed. Does it mean we will not work? No. It simply means don't regard your, the, the money you make as a function of your strength, of your ability, because if it is, then... It's not a reward. It's your strength. It's your ability. But if you trust him and he decorates you with favor and paves the way for you, tells you where to go, Holy Spirit is able to lead you to where the blessings of the Lord are. Number four is the gift of Holy Spirit himself. This is one of promise to 
you know, those who are truly disciples, if your disciple is a Holy Spirit, I will give Holy Spirit. He will lead you into all truth. He will guide you. He will teach you. He will remind you of the things you ought to do. He will also use you, empower you, and use you so that you can do my work, not in your natural strength, but in my strength. And so we, these are awesome promises. When you have the teaching note, you're going to read all of it. Number five, the privilege of being sons of Yahweh who live kingdom life here on earth as a sneak peek of the world to come. So that is to say, come to a place for mature to hear his voice, mature to submit to his will, led by Holy Spirit, we now become sons of Elohim who take care of his estate on earth. We are his sons because we are led by his spirit. He tells us to do this. We do it not in our own strength, but in his strength. And that's so important. Sonship is a state that would heal people of all those negative relationships. If you read Galatians chapter 4, 1 to 7, the Lord wants us to function as sons of Elohim, whether male or female. Number six, the privilege of constant access to the Father in prayer. With an uncluttered heart that is pure, disciples do not use prayer to load upon the Father what they want. No, the prayer is spiritual midwifery. So Matthew 6, 9 and 10, the prayer to worship the Lord, to pray to bet his will in the earth rim. And by the grace of the Lord, they pray his will because his will is what drives their life. And where there's a need, they ask, they seek, they knock, as the Lord has told them. And where there are certain things per, uh, persist, the Lord has already pre-invited them, you know, to persist in prayer, like Luke 18 from verse 1 to 7, you know, and Men and brethren, the Lord is telling us disciples have the privilege of access to him for prayer. Number seven, deliverance from wicked and unreasonable people who think, plot, and attempt to harm disciples. In the book of Second Thessalonians chapter 3, 1 to 3, finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. The same principle in Colossians 3, 1 to 3. If you are risen with Yeshua, you are seated with him in heavenly places, you know what? Our life is hidden with Yeshua and the Father. It's a secure life. And we are told in Proverbs eighteen ten, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. And he's given us the privilege of using the blood of the Lamb to overcome Satan. Revelation 12, verse 11. Overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Number eight is the gift of deliverance from the fear of death. When you become a disciple and press in, you come to the place where you know that death is not something to be tormenting. There's a time appointed you on earth. If it is 85, nothing can take away one moment from it. If it's 90, nothing can take away. Whatever it is, the Lord has appointed to you. You are delivered from fear of death. You know that when time calls for death, death is no longer oppressive. It's simply a passage into the eternal dimension of life, as we are told in the book of 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. And because of this, we don't look at death the way unbelievers backsliders and others who are not serious with the Lord look at that. This is the kind of thing that powered people like Stephen to welcome his martyrdom with open arms. They didn't flinch. They stoned him. He was busy interceding for them, just like Yeshua. Number nine, this is the blessed life of seeking, discovering, and fulfilling the very purpose for which you are created and redeemed. There's a purpose of the Father in creating every one of his disciples. There's a purpose of the Father in redeeming everyone. He said in Jeremiah 1, 5, Before I formed in the womb, I, I knew you. Before you came forth, I sanctified you. For Jeremiah, you ordained him to be prophet to the nations. And for other people, there are certain specific things the Lord says. He says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a, a, a peace, an expected end, an expected end. Brothers and sisters, that purpose, if you're a disciple, it will be fulfilled. Number 10, productivity in serving Yeshua. 
He said, you've not chosen me. I have chosen you. John 15, 16, that you should go and bring forth fruit and the fruit should remain. Listen, brothers and sisters, don't ever let anybody confuse you. We are called to be productive. And it doesn't often have to be on our own, but as part of a group, a part of a group of people connected, whether in the local assembly, that's why if there's anything the Lord is doing in your local assembly, be part of it, be an investor in it, because the Lord deals with the church. Those of you who are part of this commission, whether in prayer, whether in supporting the work of the Lord, we are doing it together. It doesn't, no one person can do the work of the Lord. It's often a body, a collective. Take your part, do your part. So, he says, will bear much fruit. Number 11, two disciples will inherit all things owned by their heavenly father. But in the world to come, even in this world, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 21, 22, it says, Wherefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, 22, whether Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. That is the reality. And brothers and sisters, if we continue number 12, the gift of change position. You know, the four negative relationship types, you know, stranger to Elohim who is distant or known, unwilling slave to an Elohim that is seen as a hard tax master, orphan to Elohim that is seen as a father that is not there, and in arrested childhood syndrome where people want to just drink milk, these four situations, a lot of believers are in it. But when you become a disciple, you make a difference. You change position. Whereas you are physical on earth, your spirit man is seated with Yeshua in heavenly places, far above all principality and power. Also, your physical body on earth and your heart becomes a mobile temple of Holy Spirit. It dwells in you. You go to the mall, he's there. Anywhere. He can show up anywhere he pleases him because you're a mobile temple of the Lord. 13. A gift of deliverance from the cause of the law. The cause of the law that is pronounced in Matthew, um, Deuteronomy 28 from verse 14 to the end, we're told in Galatians 3, 13 to 14, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Be made a cause for us, for it is written, causes everyone the hang of the tree. He took all the costs on himself, that the blessing of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles through Yeshua HaMashiach. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And then Colossians 2, 13 to 17 also. Number 14, for through disciples, all things ultimately work together for good on earth. Ask anybody who is a true disciple, whether you slap them, whether you hold or abuse at them, you rejected them, no matter what happens, the good, the bad, the ugly, according to Romans chapter 8, 28 to uh, 39, all things work together for good because the Lord has programmed the entire cosmic system of the world to work together for the good of the remnant. Number 15, they are secure with lives hidden in Yeshua. It, it frees disciples of anxiety, of worry, of fear. And when their lives are in this way settled, you see the disciples, you see them cool, calm. There's a peace around them. There's a shalom around them because they are no longer struggling. The life of struggle has ceased. The life of resting is there, men and brethren. And therefore, number 16 they have expanded relationship with the wider family of Elohim. Remember what it says. If you lose father, mother, wife, sisters, brethren, you gain a hundredfold. What does it mean? Psalm 27, 10 says, When my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Then Mark 3, Yeshua demonstrated it when they came to him, verse 13. You know, verse 31, there came then his brethren and his mother, standing without, sent unto him, calling him. The multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. Yeshua, verse 33, answered and said to them, saying, Who is my mother or my brethren? 
I looked around about on them which were sat about him, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of the Father, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. That is Yeshua's example. And he says to all of us, we are brought into the family of Elohim. For instance, if those of you are part of this commission, you know, okay, three brethren from the U.S. are here. What did they receive? Love from the brethren. When brethren go to the U.S., what they receive? Love. The family of Elohim. In all the countries of the world, they are one family, as we are told in Ephesians 2, 10 to 22. The middle of partition is broken, and Ephesians 3, 1 to 9, the middle of partition is broken. We are one family of Elohim. We have relationships as deep, if not deeper than even the natural relationships. And the Lord said, if you are rejected and cast out because you are worshipping him, then there is a family of Elohim everywhere. Whether you want to do business relationship, they are there. Just to get to know people, those who speak into your life, encourage you, they are there. Brothers and sisters, the reward in this earth is huge, it's awesome. And the Lord wants us to know this is for real. And if it is so, we should be delivered from the bondage of narrow-mindedness and self-centeredness and just be open. Give the Lord right away to complete whatever he wants to do in our lives so that when we become disciples, we know we are his followers indeed. And these promises, they are for us. They are, for, they are here and they are amen. By word of assignment, but before them, please share the video, encourage people, and we have other things you may need to receive but share the video and i want to encourage you you know what join us this evening and make some very special uh release of what the lord is saying in the now so we can receive it uh, by way of assignment please discuss any eight of these 16 rewards which touch your heart the most two what will you do with this lesson then three for additional material, please read also the rewards that are captured in course in the course on the Great Commission. It's broken down in another way. Read it also and receive from there. I want to thank the Lord for you. And the next lesson will complete this awesome course. If I were to say, every believer should go through this course. So if you are here and you receive this revelation, why not take the revelation and go look for other people who you are going to teach over a session, maybe a whole month, gather them every week or every few days, take the revelation, teach them. What is committed to your trust, don't just let it stay there, find other people, teach them, teach your spouse, teach your children, reach out to other brothers and sisters, and let this truth go forth. That's why we don't put Babylonian copyright restrictions on this, because it's not ours. This is not us. It's the Lord. He just chose us as a vessel to bring it forth. But take it further. Take it further. Let more people we don't need to know my name. The truth is what they need to know, what the Lord has told his people. And so I want to pray now and make a short announcement. Father in heaven, thank you so much because you are truly, truly, truly gracious. We receive all these things you are releasing. We pray that Holy Spirit will plow the hearts of your children and they will bring forth fruit. 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. And let all honor and glory be ascribed to you in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. We'll just make a short announcement this Saturday, which is May 13th by 10 30 p.m. UK time, which is 5 30 p.m. Um, uh, Eastern time and 4 30 p.m. UK, uh, uh, Central time. We're going to have prayer for Israel at 75. Israel is a prophetic hand of the clock of Elohim. Most of the promises concerning the or the signs concerning the end of the age will never make any meaning until Israel was returned to its land. So after over 1,500 years of being exiles across the world following the fall of Jerusalem to Nebuchadnezzar in the year 1948, something happened, a miracle. Isaiah 66 verse 7 and 8 was fulfilled 
When Isaiah says, shall a nation be born in a day, as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth. Israel was born as a result of what the Lord used this nation, United Kingdom, to do, called the Balfour Declaration and the United Nations Mandate for the League of Nations. It was finished as a flag of United Kingdom was coming down. The Star of David went up in a day. War started. That war is still being fought. But the Lord did it because he promised. Because prophecy concerning the end of the age is hinged on that prophecy being fulfilled. So come with us Saturday. Two hours to pray into Sunday, 30 minutes into Sunday, and that is the 75th anniversary of the foundation of Israel, this independence as a modern nation, that we will receive what the Lord is saying and pray kingdom prayer. Come along, and by the grace of the Lord, the poster is on my page. The Lord bless you, we love you. We're here, we'll do this again and again because the Lord wants to bless you. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.